Hello guys, today we're going to learn how to measure the execution time in the parts of our software using the Axie time. Uh, this video is actually a request of one of our subscribers who asked how can we measure time using the Axie time. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to switch now to the board to explain how we're going to connect it in Vivado HLS and uh, then we go to the lab and see how to do this in real life. Okay, so see you guys soon. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Okay guys, so measuring time with the axis time, okay? So the connection with the axis time core is quite simple. So basically, we have our zinc, okay? We enable the general purpose master port, okay? And basically, we're going to, to, to use an interconnect to connect our IP core from our previous lab on the Vivaldo HLS train that calculates the gravity, okay? And the axis time, okay? Both of them are, uh, are axis for light interface, so which means they are memory mapped. So the gravity or the axis timer in the point of view of the Zinc software is just a pointer to, uh, to some address of the memory. Okay guys, so quite simple, uh, we are actually going to measure the execution time in software and the execution time with the gravity running on the, on the hardware and uh, let's compare to see how how they uh, how much cycles per second they they have to they take to execute okay hope you guys enjoyed let's go to the lab hello guys in this lab we're going to learn how to use the axi timer uh, in a, in a zinc project okay basically the idea is to measure the a time the time of some part of your program okay using the ip core uh, well uh, I'm using uh, a lab that we did in the Vivado HLS training, okay? But actually, this is really part of the Zinc training, okay? So uh, let's open the design block just to verify how uh, what we did before. So basically, we created a, 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 an IP core in Vivado HLS that simply calculate the gravity between two bodies okay is a is an ip core who use floating point here i just add some uh, logic analyzer to uh, to verify if the circuit was working as expected but actually don't need it anymore okay so let's add the axis timer okay so let's just configure uh, well, we just need one timer. We don't need to have to, uh, to have two timers. Uh, let's enable the 64-bit mode. Okay, so we run connection automation. Okay. Now we just uh, validate to check if everything's fine. Let me validate to verify if uh, any port is needed. No, that's it. The IP core will run only with this configuration here. Okay, so uh, let's save it and let's generate the bitstream again. I'll pause the video and uh, just to to make it faster otherwise this can take some minutes okay so uh, well let's now just uh, export our bitstream stream to Xilinx SDK okay uh, then we launch launch sorry bad accent Xilinx SDK and uh, basically the the whole point is that now we just going to 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 see how to use this uh, axis timer driver that ships with the with this IP. It's quite simple. So now in the in the Zilis SDK, one thing that we can verify is if we have the driver loaded. Okay, so here it is. So basically, uh, okay, I can just start showing how to use the axis timer, but I'll do better. I'll create a class that 
is going to to work as a helper of the axis timer okay so let's create here a class it's going to be called axis timer helper okay and uh, let's start working it so the first thing that we need to remember is to include X parameters and the uh, timer control and the uh, X XL types. So headers. Okay. Uh, okay. He didn't found the X timer control. Uh, let me modify the settings. Maybe this can can help. Let's say that's none. Again, timer control. Yeah, okay. So, guys, just modify the BSP settings, put to none, and regenerate and bring it, bring it back again. And, uh, well, 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 well. Now it works. Cool. So, now let's paste the code of this class here okay it's quite simple as well there is nothing fancy pp so let me explain what the co code does okay so here is the constructor okay basically we initialize our timer okay by the way this is defined in the x parameters okay and uh we set the uh, our internal variable our variable member okay uh clock period in seconds okay to have this parameter here which is by the way also defined in the in the x parameters which by the way not showing now cool here okay 100 megahertz which by the way is how uh, how by default the the zinc pl clock is defined okay so let's continue here is going to get the ellipse time in ticks okay basically you start the timer and stop the timer and this will uh will get the value the current value uh that you have now in ticks and when you stop you calculate the a second one and you just return the difference between them okay and if you want to get the ellipse time in seconds we basically calculate this difference and we multiply by our clock period okay simple as that i will show now how to use this guy let's delete this include it's not needed copy and paste error okay so let's go to our original code let's define here this guy let's create uh, this object of this type okay so basically uh, what we need to do is uh, we call any code that we want to test and get the time so let me check for instance here okay so we come here path start timer here we stop the timer and then at this point put it here something like ellipse time and we put here the time get ellipse time in seconds okay uh, 
let's do this also for the part that we do on on the hardware part and maybe we can get a surprise <laughs> We can have a surprise. <laughs> I got amazed how bad I speak English. So, okay. So now I will stop the video just to connect my Z board and uh, let's test to check if this is working. So our Z board is connected. So let's see what happens. Let's run the program in the Z board. Okay, so we got an interesting result. It takes three microseconds to run the software version, which is here okay and actually take 19 microseconds to run this uh, the same algorithm in the hardware which makes sense because this algorithm here is really simple it's just an if okay uh, and uh, two multiplications and one division so as the zinc is working at uh, around one gigahertz and our IP core is probably working at 100 megahertz, which we can actually see this just by open the block design. Actually, the speed of the of the PL part is configurable inside the zinc, so it's really easy to know uh, the uh, the speed that our IP core is running. Okay, so let's just wait Vivado to decide and open. So uh, if we double click in the zinc. And wait and wait and wait. Okay, and we go here. Uh, clock configuration. PL fabric clocks. We can see that our cores are going to run at uh, 100 megahertz, which is actually this clock here. If uh, this guy here, okay, which is basically. Uh, controlling our IP cores, you see. So, resuming, in this case, in this simple case here would be better to do this on the on the PS part, on the software part. Or you could do on parallel, which is also uh, a good way to gain performance. But basically, just to answer one of the, our subscriber questions, this is how we measure time in the uh, on the zinc is one of the ways there are other ways there is uh, some internal timers in the arm part as well okay so just to take a look again how we configure the timer we initialize it okay uh, then when we start our timer we reset the the timer to zero okay uh we get the current value of the timer we start the the timer and then when we stop we just ask the timer to stop and get the the, the counting of the timer so uh before uh, after you start the timer the clock will increment when you stop it you stop <laughs> and get the the counter value and calculate for instance here in seconds with the number of, of periods with the frequency of your clock okay so this is how we calculate in seconds so hope you guys enjoyed this is a, a nice way to know how to measure time uh, to know if your accelerator is actually performing better than the same version on software so i uh, hope you guys enjoyed and see you guys in the next video when i probably go back to the vivado hls playlist and talk more about uh, now the bram interface okay ciao ciao guys